Hey everyone, Brian Shannon here. Today is Friday, the 21st of March, 2014. Let's look at this market. Uh, the S&P 500 for the week did gain a little bit less than 1%. Uh, the NASDAQ about a third of a percent. Russell 2000, 1%, a little less than. But the semiconductors and financials broke out to new highs and added to their year-to-date gains. Uh, also, we saw gold pull back a little bit. Let's take a look at the uh, action on the charts. The S&P 500 is getting a little bit, you know, the market's been a little bit volatile actually. Um, you have to consider that we did pay an 82 cent dividend in the S&P 500 as well. That's not reflected in here. But we did see the market uh, close at the lows of the day or very close to them and that's not something we want to see. Um, we did hold though above the uh, key little area of support here um, right down at about 186 to 186 and a half and that's a level that I would pointed out midweek uh, on Twitter. This is going to be an important level for next week. We have a rising five day moving average. So we're looking at really kind of a sloppy chart here on the S&P 500 on the intermediate term. Longer term, of course, we're still in a primary uptrend, although it seems to be getting tired. And that's maybe what this volatility is telling us that uh, it needs to consolidate a little bit further. Uh, I, I think some very important levels to keep an eye on next week would include, uh, we could take a look at a trend line that looks like this kind of represents the essence of trend. And that kind of comes in with uh, an important area down at about 184 and a half uh, to 185 actually is uh, a, a, a what should be a band of support. So we've got that trend line and then the potential support at 184 and a quarter to 184 and a half. We are still in a primary uptrend, but if we were to see a pullback, perhaps we would get down towards that 50 day moving average. On the NASDAQ, we lost a dollar today and you can see here, we are very close to that 50 day moving average. The 50 day moving average is advancing, but we are below a five day moving average and had a uh, difficult day that was wasn't able to get back above an important area of resistance that that 80, uh, I'm sorry, 90.75 to 91. So this is going to be the key level of resistance next week for the NASDAQ. If it can get above that level decisively, then perhaps we continue to move higher. But for now, we have to just kind of look at it with a little bit of an eye of suspicion and see that we have an important area down here at the 50 day moving average between 80, uh, you know, I think 88 and 88 and a half next week uh, should be our bigger band of support. If that fails to hold, then perhaps we see a little bit deeper pullback. So we need to we need to be cautious here uh, in these major indices. The Russell 2000 is maybe uh, being a little bit tired up in here, but it's not giving anything back on a uh, uh, price wise. We're just kind of consolidating through time a little bit. I think the important level early next week to watch will be 118. If we break below that and then hold below it, then I think uh, it would be looking uh, more likely that we see a pullback down towards the 50 day moving average in this market as well. The semiconductors, as we know, had a good week. Uh, they broke out on uh, Thursday to new highs and uh, held on to those gains for the most part today. That is, we uh, closed um, above that uh, prior resistance for this week. So that's good to see. And longer term, we're still in a primary uptrend. So semiconductors are behaving well. The uh, key band of support or what should be a band of support that we want to focus on early next week would be really between 44 75 and where we are right now. If that fails to hold, then perhaps we have a failed breakout and we would come back down towards the next important area near 4360. Again, there's nothing here indicating that we're about to break down. So don't misinterpret any of this as bearish. We're in a primary market. It just seems to be a uh, primary bull market rather. Uh, it seems as though maybe we're getting a little bit tired up here. Financials were down seven pennies today. But again, for the week, they, uh, you know, the financials were up to a 0.8% as were the semiconductors. So you can't be bearish about markets that are making those kinds of moves. We have on the 30 minute time frame, uh, which should be a little band of support in here, right, right about where we are. And if that fails to hold, then 2020 will be an important area that we want to see. Uh, and then this trend line down below it. But again, the primary trends are higher. Let's take a look at some of the stocks. Apple uh, has been kind of, you know, staying stuck below this trend line. If it can break beyond that, uh, even above of this week's high, I think, uh, near about 537-ish. If you break above there, then perhaps the buyers wrestle back control. For now, though, what we have is uh, a little bit of a triangle here where the energy is building for something. Uh, if you want to make a prediction, then you make it, you know, you're making a bet. I'm not willing to make a prediction. I'm willing to look at the stock and say, here's what the potential scenarios are. Back probably below 526-ish, 
uh, to this 524. If we break below and hold below that level, I think it's highly likely that we would continue down uh, further, perhaps down towards about 515 or so. Uh, however, if we were to get back above and hold above uh, the, these, you know, this little band of resistance, then I think that Apple can continue to move higher. So until it does that, uh, either of those, we're kind of in no man's land here. And it's, you know, if you're making a guess, it's just a guess. It's a bet. Um, I wish you the best on either direction, but uh, I think that uh, Apple's better for for day trades while it remains in this uh, range. Now, uh, Tesla is obviously in a longer term uptrend. It has been for a while, and Tesla is continuing to uh, hold up here. But what we see is that we're we're getting these lower highs and more repeated tests of this support. The more often support is tested, the more likely it is to fail to hold. With the lower highs tell us that sellers aren't waiting for a bounce to 260 to sell. They're not waiting for a bounce to 247 or a bounce to 242. Instead, they're getting more aggressive and that's creating more pressure with these lower highs and more pressure with the more repeated tests of support. So it appears to me uh, with Tesla below a declining five-day moving average that next week it feels like this stock should be breaking down maybe even as low as the 50-day moving average in towards about 210, 215. Um, I think that you know what would change my mind about that is if we were to get back above and hold above about $240. It's going to be, you know, it's always a tricky stock because it's volatile, but uh, it appears as though a little bit deeper pullback is in order for the stock, and uh, that seems reasonable to me. Uh, we had uh, some damage done, obviously, to the biotechs this week. Uh, today, the, this group was down 4.5%. We're still in, of course, a primary bull market here, and we have a rising 50-day moving average, which tells me that this group is likely to experience some kind of a bounce in here at some point next week. We did break below this little trend line here, and if we took a uh a look a little bit further back on this daily time frame. You can see that this this uh, chart this trend line goes back a little further. Um, you know, perhaps though we're going to continue down towards 240 before it gets a bounce. The fact is we're below a declining five-day moving average. We're also below a declining volume weighted average price for today's action, and that tells it's high risk. But at some point next week, I would expect a bounce. It's just tough to say where that would be. We need more information from the market. We need to observe it and see how it fills in, uh, where it finds the support, and how it reacts to each day's volume weighted average price. There was also a little bit of damage done in the uh, IYR. This is the uh, uh, U.S. real estate ETF, and the IYR has been uh, kind of in, in in no man's land for, for a bit here. It got up towards the high end of the range, but uh, failed to break out, and we saw that over the last couple days, uh, a little bit of weakness in there. And that's just worth noting because of the intensity of the selling that we saw for a brief period of time. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's in still a primary bull market with a rising 50 day moving average. So these are things that we need to be aware of, but recognizing that there are some sectors where selling is coming in. It's not, it's not uh, devastating this market by any means, of course, with the uh, markets up near highs, but it's worth noting that we're seeing a little bit more aggressive selling. And perhaps that's because we're seeing, you know, we've seen so much uh, froth lately with stocks like uh, the fuel cells. Um, the, and, and if you look at these fuel cells, you know, everyone wanted to own them on the way up. And I've seen a lot of people trying to buy them on the way down as well. But while we're below a declining five day moving average, it's guilty till proven innocent in stocks like plug, there is no bounce yet. So just stay, uh, just be careful of, of those types of stocks. We had some good ones in, in uh, uh, alpha trends this week. We had uh, FNSR was a real nice winner. We got involved in this one at uh, 25.15, sold a little bit of it up in here. And now we've got our stop up at, at this uh, area about 20, uh, 27.30. Uh, GLNG was a nice one for our subscribers today. We got long at just uh, just under 40 bucks a share, 41 rather. Uh, some that didn't work uh, would include HSOL. HSOL was uh, a solar that we we, try, we got long right in here and got stopped out of it for a short, uh, small loss 
right in this area. And that's the key is small losses. We were also looking for an entry this week in, in shares of BEAT, uh, B-E-A-T. You can see on this daily time frame, it's consolidating. It had pulled back, uh, but it was below the declining five-day moving average. And what we need to see is a higher high above a rising flat to rising five-day moving average. So maybe this one will go next week, but we stayed out of it and didn't waste our time or, or money basically by getting stopped out as it went uh, lower. So uh, if you're interested and you haven't taken a look at a free trial in the past, go ahead to alphatrends.net and sign up for that free trial for a week. I uh, hope everyone had a good week of trading and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in.